Hello, everybody. This is Dane Campbell with a special episode of Drum for the Song. This is a tribute to one of my all-time favorite drummers, Taylor Hawkins of the Foo Fighters, as I'm sure most of you know, passed away in March this year. Very, very sad. A lot of people in the drum and music community were very shocked and obviously gutted about this. Um, our thoughts go out to Taylor's family and, and band members and anyone that knew him. Sadly, I never got to meet him. But I know a few people that did. Um, a lot of my past guests, some friends of the show, some future guests, uh, have thankfully uh, offered to make a contribution to this episode. So thanks to everyone that's done that. With some stories about whether they met him or what his music meant to them or his drumming. So it's a you know a fairly short episode, but something that you can listen to to respect Taylor Hawkins drumming and his life. He sounded like he was a, a top class man, really nice and down to earth by the sound of it, despite his incredible successfulness uh, and stardom in the music world but yeah i hope you really enjoy this um and yeah thanks again for checking it out cheers Hello everybody, Mike Tarana here, and I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about uh, the career of Taylor Hawkins. Uh, this is kind of a sad video to make because uh, I really enjoyed Taylor's work. I think he had a wonderful, very long and illustrious career. I enjoyed his drumming since the days of Alanis Morissette. I always enjoyed his uh, energy and the positive vibe that he gave off. and. Uh, it's also kind of unfortunate. I feel a little bit sorry for David Grohl. Well, I feel a lot sorry for David Grohl, actually, uh, because um, I think he lost a good friend. I think those two guys uh, were, were tight buddies. It looks like they had a lot of fun together. And of course, the interesting thing about the Foo Fighters was they brought the drumming to the forefront. Uh, a lot of times the drummer's in the back, not so much lighting, not so much attention, but Dave Grohl being a drummer himself, a great drummer and a very successful musician, songwriter, singer, uh, befriended Taylor Hawkins. And I think they had a fantastic chemistry. And I think that was a big part of the success of the Foo Fighters. People enjoyed watching that. I myself did too. I mean, I like the way Taylor Hawkins played drums, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, an aggressive, athletic, powerful, style and uh, I thought his image was pretty cool. Just a guy that looks like he just came off of a surfboard, <laughs> got on the drums and kicked it out. And uh, yeah, it's just a shame that, it, that his career is over. And this, I think, has uh, changed the, the chemistry of the Foo Fighters, um, which is kind of sad because I, I enjoyed the band and I think that goes for uh, all the fans of the Foo Fighters alike. So, um, all I can say is my, my condolences to uh, Dave Grohl, the band members, and uh, of course to Taylor Hawkins' family. He left behind his wife and three children. Uh, that's kind of sad. I, I really think Taylor Hawkins had a fantastic career. I identify with him. I, I've never met the man, but um, I'm about 12 years older than him. Exactly, I'm 12 years older than Taylor Hawkins. and. Uh, we kind of had the same influences. I too, growing up, loved Rush, Neil Peart, The Professor, uh, Roger Taylor from Queen, also fantastic. So I think uh, I identify with his style and I identify with where he's coming from in, in, in his musical influences. And of course, you got a chance to play with Rush and a host of other fantastic musicians that the Foo Fighters were uh, playing with. So I think that's every drummer's dream. And I think Taylor Hawkins lived it. So God bless Taylor and uh, his work lives on. He left a piece here for us to enjoy and for younger drummers to be inspired by and to learn from. Thank you for listening. 
Hey, this is Ryan Richards here from Funeral for a Friend. And um, yeah, at the moment, like every other drummer in the world or, well, every other music fan in the world, um, just shocked at the passing of, uh, of Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters. Um, yeah, what a loss. I mean, as I said earlier, um, as a drummer, yeah. I mean, he's, I think, honestly, one of the best that's ever done it to for, for for Dave Grohl who's obviously one of the best rock drummers also to ever do it you know for Dave Grohl to trust someone to fill his seat as it were um you've got to be some drummer you've really got to be some drummer and for him to do that for so long for Taylor to to come in there and not only um do justice to Dave Grohl's um, incredible drum parts on the first two Foo Fighters albums, um, but to but to continue on that legacy and to and to um, just take the Foo Fighters forward to the point where they became well, not even arguably they they became the biggest rock band in the world. I don't think anyone could argue with that now. Certainly of the modern era. So um, yeah. Definitely um, a huge loss and um, someone whose drumming is going to live far beyond Taylor Hawkins' years. Uh, so yeah, thanks for, the, thanks for the memories, thanks for the beats. Rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins. Hi, I'm Emily Dolan Davis. Um, Taylor Hawkins, wow. Uh, obviously, I feel like we're all still in shock about the situation. Um, I had the massive privilege of spending a very short time with Taylor. Uh, and aside from being just this incredible energy on stage and this incredible player, the thing that struck me the most was his, his enthusiasm for the drums and drummers and music and all of that, but also his kindness and how much he cared. Um, so I sat and had lunch with him for a bit we basically spent three hours talking about just drums and music. It was amazing and I loved it. But the thing that stuck with me was that when fans would come over to talk to him, he really took the time and he had so much respect for his fans, for the Foo Fighters fans. And, and he would really just take the time and, and, and he cared, he cared so much. And um, that is the thing that stuck with me the most. So uh, I think, Obviously, he's a, it's a great loss to not just the drum community, not just the music community, but to the world. So, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to miss him loads. This is uh, Frank, formerly with Fozzy and Stuck Mojo. And uh, I just wanted to share my uh, Taylor Hawkins story really quickly. I was really uh, shocked the other day when I found out that he had passed. I mean, it just came out of nowhere. Guy was an amazing player um just great pocket and feel and just you know just uh, almost the perfect rock drummer i mean he just played for the song um and uh, i posted all about this on facebook but i just wanted to share um that in uh 2011 fozzy was playing the uh revolver magazine golden gods awards show in Los Angeles at the Nokia Theater, and we opened the show. Uh, Dave Grohl actually came out on stage, uh, kind of semi introduce us. We did this uh, gag with a with a boombox, and Grohl just came out and set the boombox out there, and uh, and then Jericho smashed it with a bat, and that's how we started the show. And we we did a uh, a medley of metal songs, and then we played one of our own songs, and. Anyway, it went it went really well, and uh, so Taylor Hawkins was there with Dave Grohl, but you know they were just hanging out. They didn't perform, and um, after our performance, I was just walking around backstage, and um, he was standing with a group of people, like at the at the top of a landing where some stairs went down, and and uh, I thought about saying something, but you know he was he was talking to people, so I just you know, just kind of walked by and, and, uh, started down the stairs and, and, uh, I heard somebody say, Hey man, from above me. And I looked up and he was looking and he was like, great drumming, man. And gave me a thumbs up. 
And, you know, I said, thanks, man. That means a lot coming from you. You know, thank you. I think you're great too. And it was just a, a quick exchange. And like I said, in the, uh, in the, uh, Facebook story that I, I thought about kind of trying to go up there and talk more and kind of in, uh, insert myself into the conversation, but I thought it was probably not a good idea. Um, but I just thought it was really cool that he took that few seconds to acknowledge me, you know, cause he didn't need to, I had already walked by him and, you know, I mean, he didn't have to say, it wasn't one of those things where, uh, you know, when you're in a situation where you feel like you have to say something nice, you know, cause somebody's right in your face. I think every musician in there at some point in their career has had the whole, where you played a show and, and somebody you admire saw you perform and said, you guys sounded great, which is always a fake compliment. You sounded great. Um, so just the fact that he took the time to stop me as I had already walked past and, and say great drumming, you know? And, um, so like I said, I, uh, I never got to meet the guy again, unfortunately. And, um, you know, but everything I understand was that he was a really great guy and really down to earth. And, you know, from interviews I've seen, he certainly seemed that way and just a really, just a tremendous loss to the music world, you know? Um, I really feel for the guys in his band. I feel for his family, obviously, and just, uh, you know, gone way too young and it's just a tragedy. So, uh, you know, that was my story. I wanted to share it and, um, you know, rest in peace, man. I, I hope, uh, I hope you're jamming with some amazing musicians up there. Take care. Hi, my name's Adam Parsons. I'm an artist manager and a self-confessed drum nut here in Southern California. And we're here to talk about Taylor Hawkins and his untimely passing a few weeks ago. As all of us, we, I was absolutely shocked when I heard the news that he'd uh, passed away in South America on tour with the Foo Fighters. And what is what can you say about the man other than he was an absolute legend, influenced a generation, um, was in one of the world's biggest bands with a single and guitar player that was again another one of the most iconic drummers that this generation has seen. So that's no easy feat for him to be able to pull that off for 25 years. Um, I had the honour of meeting the man three times. Twice was when I had acts opening up for the Foo Fighters and I'd see him backstage and in corridors and we spoke for a couple of minutes and uh, he was uh, a lovely man, very genuine, very real. What you saw is what you got. The third time was in a drum store um, in Southern California that dealt with uh, secondhand instruments and um, we were both looking for the same thing a, a bargain snare drum or drums in general so I spent a few minutes talking to him about drums which was very cool because he loved drums loved talking about them uh, like we all do so yeah I can only send my condolences sincere condolences to Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters their crew and their management who had been with him 25 years and obviously he was a brother to them so they must be really hurting obviously at this point to his wife and kids um, that uh, obviously missing Taylor immensely but he left a legacy that will be remembered forever from the Foo Fighters albums through to uh, all the stuff that's on the internet live footage of him playing with with Alanis Morissette with the Foo Fighters and everything else he did um, to his teaching and instructional clips on YouTube it's going to be there for the rest of eternity for us to remember him by there you go nothing else to say really um, what a great man great player and a lovely guy hi Dane Hi uh, listeners or viewers, Rich Battersby here from the Wild Hearts and Grand Theft Audio. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, Dane. Thanks for asking me. Wish it was under better circumstances, really. What can I say about 
Taylor Hawkins. I mean, what a star. He really was a shining light, so talented and seemed to be unfazed and unaffected by his success. Um, I only met him once way back in 1996 at the Phoenix Festival. He was still playing with Alanis Morissette, but Foo Fighters were also playing. And we were standing at the side of the stage watching Foo Fighters and he was telling me he was mates with Dave Grohl and we were just having a laugh and taking the piss out of Dave saying like, oh, he's a better drummer than he is singer, isn't he? And, you know, he just seemed like such a nice guy and everything I've heard or read of him since would suggest he was still that same guy, you know. Um, yeah, his, his playing <clears throat> obviously speaks for itself. Such a solid player uh so much power and energy and you know anything that he chose to play from the simplest of patterns to the flashiest of fills he always completely nailed it and made it look so easy you know but apart from being a, an insanely talented drummer he, he also had his solo band as well which he's done like three fantastic albums that i only kind of got started listening to them what about in, in the last year really and i mean the the latest one is just uh, it's the arrangements are just really imaginative and you know just uh, just obviously killer drumming so he's just obviously such a talented guy and um it's just so sad isn't it so i guess we've just got to be thankful that even though he passed way before his time he left us so many reminders of what a huge talent he was and enough material with the Foo Fighters and solo stuff to keep us and generations to come inspired. So, uh, yeah, thanks for asking me on, Dane, and um, thanks, Taylor Hawkins, for everything. This next clip is from Ryan Smith of the Outlaw Orchestra from episode 36 of Drum for the Song podcast. Check his band out, they're really good. Hey, drum for the song listeners. So as you know, Taylor Hawkins passed away recently and sent a mighty shockwave of sadness through the music industry, his friends, family, uh, all the all the fans that loved him and, and, and the Foo Fighters and you know all the other bands that he's been in. Um, I mean for me, Taylor the the is one you know one of my favorite drummers and one of the big things that influenced me as a drummer and as a person uh was if you look at him drum you look at him play all the time you look at him he's just got so much energy and so much passion and power but the main thing uh, was his positivity through the way he played he was always smiling always happy and you know i think that's one of the things that's really impacted me and sort of it's you know trying to teach me to you know to play with with happiness and and positivity you know and you could tell clearly he obviously was loving um what he was doing um and and think from things i've seen in interviews um and i've met him once um at reading festival you know quite a long time ago i think 2012 maybe um he's just very friendly very a very warm hearted soul and you know a, a great person great musician and obviously he's going to be missed by myself and you know millions of people um so taylor hawkins rest in peace and uh keep drumming away up there in the uh in the gig in the sky hi chris allen here like so many i've been shocked and overwhelmed by the sudden passing of taylor hawkins i first became aware of taylor when I was about 10 years old uh, and I saw that he played a track on Brian May's solo album. Um, I was about a year into playing and his drumming just blew me away. The following year, the Foo Fighters released Breakout as a single and I've been a fan ever since. Every time Taylor sat behind the kit, he just seemed so happy to be there. He was like a kid all over again. Um, and he had this incredible 
infectious enthusiasm that is so inspiring. I loved the fact that he was such a fan. Even though he was in the biggest band in the world, he didn't try and hide the fact that he was a total fanboy of all these drummers and musicians that, you know, were on the same level as, as he was. He was just like one of us. One thing that resonates so well with me is his love for, for Queen, 70s and 80s rock music, um, and the drum sounds of those periods as well. I love the way that, you know, he approached his playing. It was big, it was bold and, you know, powerful, but he always played for the song always played for the song he was the true rock and roll drummer of our generation and he's going to be missed for a very long time the next clip is from a good friend of mine Rogerio Souza I hope I pronounced the name correctly he was guitar tech and stage manager for Motorhead um, but this is a great story about Taylor Hawkins. Hello, everyone. Uh, here's my favorite Taylor Hawkins story, or one of the few I have. But we were in Australia. Uh, Motorhead was supporting Motorhead. In, I can't remember the year. And across the street in Melbourne, Foo Fighters were playing to a sold out crowd. So. Me, Lemmy, Tim, and a couple of the others went to see them in Sydney. But Melbourne was the same day. Both gigs in arenas, both gigs sold out. And I'm changing swings and doing my everyday jobs. And all of a sudden I look at the window and there's this blonde guy just going like... I'm like, hmm, that looks like Taylor. Well, that is Taylor. So I walked outside, talked to the security, I'm like, this guy's gonna come in. Like, he doesn't have a pass. Like, I'll sort him a pass out. Don't worry about it. And so he went to Motley Crue's production office, got his pass, and I helped him to come in. And he was humble and basically just a nice guy. So we all miss you, Taylor. Uh, Godspeed. Love you, brother. See you soon. This is Spike T. Smith here. I'd like to thank Dane for inviting me to take part in this uh, podcast in memory of the great Taylor Hawkins. Uh, like many, you know, I was shocked and deeply saddened when I heard the news of his passing. Um, I, again, like all everybody around the world and drummers in particular, I was a massive fan of his playing. I can remember when I first seen him um, with Alanis Morissette. Uh, on TV and actually uh, at a festival and um, even more impressed when I first seen him with the Foo Fighters uh, a short time after. Um, I thought I'd sort of tell a little story the first time I met him because uh, I think it shows the uh, you know the beauty and naturalness, uh, naturalness of the man himself. It was in uh, Reading, the year was 2002 and Foo Fighters were headlining uh, that particular year. I was there just as a guest, I wasn't playing, but somehow I'd managed to get um, not just a, a guest list pass, but, but a pass that uh, got me through to catering, which was uh, taking me past the main stage. So on my little adventure exploring round, I thought, oh, I wonder if I could get up on that main stage and have a look at some of the kits and you know what, what nots that are there. So uh, this I duly did, I managed to get up there, no problem. I was looking through some of the drum kits and who should I see, uh, or who should I see, but Taylor's kit and um, his drum tech, Wiley, who was also a friend of his, was uh, there, you know, probably making sure everything was okay or had just finished setting it up. So I went over and, uh, had, you know, introduced myself and um, started chatting with Wiley about the kit. And the kit was, a, you know, quite a, you know, like a... Um, you know, like a, a, a ramshackle affair, really. Um, it was just when he was starting to really uh, expand his kit from the more run-of-the-mill four-piece. He had a little 
concertone, I remember that looked a bit, you know, Phil Collins inspired. Um, you had um, the rotor tom and the wood blocks and, uh, you know, and um, cymbals, you know, like he had more cymbals, they were higher up. <clears throat> I was having a, a, you know, like a good look and while he was taking me through the kit and one of the interesting points of it was that it had, the bass drum was either uh, steel, you know, steel or metal and it come from uh, an old Ian Pace from Deep Purple kit apparently. So, you know, we're having a good little look at it and a chat about it and who should come, who should come bounding over but Taylor himself. So, uh, I was introduced to him. And uh, we were chatting and, um, you know, I'd explained who that I'd been playing for Morrissey and one of his close friends was uh, at that time I'd taken over and was playing for Morrissey. So we had this little connection. Um, anyway, he jumps on his kit to have a little razzle about, make sure everything's going OK. And I was uh, surprised and impressed because it was quite early on in the day, you know, so they were obviously hanging around from from early on. And uh, he had a razzle on the kit and was, you know, telling me a bit about it and this bass drum and whatnot. And um, the next thing, he passes me his sticks and says, oh, have a go, man. So I was like, whoa, you know. So there I was, having a go on Taylor Hawkins' kit. And, um, yeah, that was, you know, like a, a really great little experience. And, um, and that was it, you know. It, it, Shortly after, he went off to do his thing and, you know, and I continued, you know, enjoying my day. Um, come later on that night, uh, when they came on stage, I managed to blag it back onto the stage. Uh, and I was back on side stage. And I remember being completely blown away to, you know, by the whole band, but his drumming in particular and the powerhouse he was. Um, you know, to watch from the side of the stage and to watch the whole gig and... Yeah, it was it was really special. Um, I met him a bunch of times after that as well. I met him again uh, at a Foo Fighters show in uh, in California, and then again, what would be probably the following year at um, what would be the V Festival. Uh, I was there with from a stag do, and um, and Dave and Taylor, you know, took me on stage, and I was watched the whole set from side stage again. So yeah, so you know, that's my little story. Uh, he was a beautiful guy, the times I met him, and that's what I've heard everybody saying. So, yeah, you know, R.I.P. Taylor. Hi, I'm Wyatt, radio presenter at Planet Rock and drummer for the band The Black Spiders. And I, like so many people around the world, was really, really shocked at the sudden and sad passing of Taylor Hawkins. On the radio side of things, I met him in September 2019 when he had just released the Coattails single and the album was coming out and he came into the studio. And uh, I just remember what a fun guy he was. Polite, charismatic, and he had that kind of aura about him that wasn't aloof and standoffish. He made you feel like he was just talking to one of the girls or one of the guys in my case. And it never felt like a work, which it probably can for a lot of musicians when they're on a constant conveyor belt of interviews. And he was very humorous, self-deprecating. He he could laugh at himself, and uh, he was a he was a joy to be around for that sort of hour that I was in his company. And obviously, I didn't think that would be the one and only time I would see him or interview him, uh, which has now proved to be the case, sadly. And on the drumming side of things. I think the biggest compliment I could pay him is that I have subconsciously been really influenced by him. When I've recorded stuff, people would say, yeah, yeah, do that Taylor Hawkins thing or, or give it that sort of more of that Taylor Hawkins vibe. And I guess through seeing him play and hearing stuff, I've kind of sort of adopted stylistically his way of doing it, which may sound like a, a backhanded compliment, but his style of playing growing up or, or as a young adult wasn't what I leaned towards, but it, it just kind of seeped into my own plane because it was so accessible and it speaks really well in the context of a song. So yeah, his, his playing has become subconsciously now consciously a very big influence on, on me now and moving forward. And he is going to be a huge loss to this music industry. 
Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Adam Breeze here from the band Wargasm UK. Um, thank you very much for Dane for having me on this uh, little episode, this special episode, which obviously you guys know is about uh, Mr. Oliver Taylor Hawkins, who he lost a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago. Still haven't really kind of like gone over it. Uh, had a little tattoo to commemorate him obviously he's been a big 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 influence on me as a player probably the the guy that kind of started it all for me i mean I, if you look at my studio i have pictures of him everywhere there's more over there and stuff but um, i remember going to uh, see the foo fighters in 2012 at reading this was the first time seeing them and seeing taylor hawkins play behind the kit was just enough for me to go i want to do that and pick up a pair of sticks and follow, kind of follow in his path and um, and play music. So when I ha when I heard about his passing, it was just like you just think these sorts of people are invincible, you know. Um, but I've just been blasting a lot of Foo Fighters, a lot of his own stuff over the last couple of days, um, and just celebrating kind of his life and his his ability to just to have this raw energy that just excites anyone who watches him. So. It's it's a real gift to have, and I don't think a lot of guys and girls have that. Um, and Taylor was one of them. And he always thought, I think, that he was just like this massive fanboy of the police and Rush. But he didn't realise how big of an influence he was to other people. So um, this is for you, Mr. Hawkins. Thank you so much for everything. Rest in peace, brother. Drum for the Song Podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of Drum for the Song Podcast. If you've enjoyed this, please consider liking the video and subscribing if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcasts. If you could leave me a review or comment, that would be fantastic too, as it helps other people discover this show. Please also consider sharing this with any family members or friends who might enjoy the content. You can also follow me on social media at Dane underscore drums or at drum for the song or search for drum for the song on Facebook to follow the page and join the official Facebook group. If you'd like to support the podcast, you could purchase some merchandise from drumforthesong.com or consider supporting me via Patreon from just £3 per month for additional exclusive content like bonus episodes video calls with myself, competitions, discounts, and much more. Any additional support is always greatly appreciated, but I would like to give extra special thanks to my top-tier Groove Master patrons, whose names are listed in the description below. My name is Dane Campbell, and thanks so much for watching or listening this far. If you're a drummer, don't forget to drum for the song!